What's up chess friends? How are you guys doing? I hope you're having a nice day wherever you are. This is Spanish Grandmaster Pepe Cuenca and I welcome you to this third video where we talk about the Netflix series The Queen's Gambit. We already presented two videos as you know and in this third one we're gonna analyze a game that happened in the episode number six where Elizabeth Harmon, Beth Harmon, is facing Benny Bats, who is a Grandmaster from the United States. The game is really famous actually, as you know, these games are based on real games, right? And uh, at the end of the analysis, I'm gonna tell you the names of the real players. But probably many of you know this game, so let's just focus on this fantastic chess game between Elizabeth Harmon and Benny Bats. Okay, so Elizabeth starts with e4 and Benny replies with e5, knight f3, d6 from Benny entering in the so-called Philidor defense. My favorite one. I've been playing this line for 20 years. So, as you guys probably know, knight c6 or knight f6 are the main move. So knight f6 going for the Petrov defense, but d6 by Benny. Now d4 occupying the center, and here Benny goes for bishop g4. This is considered to be inaccurate nowadays. I'll try to explain you why in a few seconds. The main move nowadays is e takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and bishop e7. And for example, you have seen Magnus Carlsen or Daniel Dubov playing this line in the last months in the Magnus Tour tournaments. So definitely very, very playable. But after bishop g4, the problem is that after d takes e5, black is now forced to give up the bishop pair on f3. Because if black takes on e5, now queen takes d8 first, king takes d8, and knight e5, this is just a healthy pawn up for white. And uh, we are putting pressure on f7 on the bishop on g4, and this king has lost the right to castle. So this is why this is considered to be much better for white. After d takes e5, black is uh, therefore forced to take on f3. And after queen takes f3, d takes f e5, sorry, we have the bishop pair, and um, black has achieved nothing in return. So this is why this is an inaccurate uh, variation nowadays. So now Beth continues with bishop c4, the best I own for this bishop, just trying to give, a, to give checkmate in the next move on f7. And now black parries that threat with the move knight f6. Probably a little bit better is queen f6 in this position. Now white continues with queen b3, putting pressure on b7. And now knight d7 is actually very interesting. Because after queen takes b7, rook b8, there are actually some tricks in this position. You shouldn't take on a7 because of bishop c5, boom, attacking the queen and attacking f2 with these two pieces and basically white is losing. I mean, same problem arises after queen c7. Now bishop d6 is very strong. There are no squares for the queen. You cannot take on a7 because of bishop c5. You cannot go queen a5 because of bishop b4 just winning the queen. And after queen c6, there is a nice intermediate, uh, sorry, discover check with bishop b4 just winning the queen in the next move. So you should be very careful after rook b8 and probably white should go queen a6. After queen a6, bishop a6, white uh, still has a great advantage in this position because white is a healthy pawn up again. But after bishop c4, Veni goes for knight f6 and now queen b3 attacking b7 and attacking f7. Now black cannot protect uh, both, uh, both squares at the same time with a piece, right? So it's difficult to do two things at a time, right? So for example, I don't know if you guys have tried. Uh, I, I love singing, you know, I love singing when I'm taking a shower, you know, I start singing some shit and then, uh, okay, singing is easy even though I sing terribly, but okay, you can, you can sing, yeah? But uh, if you try to sing and then play the guitar, I don't know how the musicians you, you know, for me it's just impossible, you know, just trying to create some rhythm with my hands, you know, and then trying to sing, it's just impossible for me, you know, I look so stupid. So here black has the same trouble, black has to protect both, both squares, f7 and b7, it's actually not possible to do, uh, to do it, so this is why white is on top in this position, and black tried queen e7, which is a good move, because after queen b7, black is not losing the rook, as it looks, because of queen b4 check, and black managed to trade queens, at least. Of course, again, this is a very good position for white, but at least black is not losing immediately. So after queen e7, Elizabeth Harmon says, you know what, I don't wanna 
go for an ending just for the pawn up so i just want to crush you and that's why she just developed the knight to c3 now white is ready to continue with bishop g5 and then long castle so black protects b7 by playing c6 which is a good move because also controls the d5 square and now bishop g5 and black is is in some sort of suit span right because it's just impossible to develop the queen side after knight b to d7 b7 falls after knight a6 bishop takes a6 ruins black pawn structure and is uh, it's not easy to develop the queen the king side sorry because there is a queen on e7 just stopping this bishop development let's say after h6 we can just take on f6 and then this forces black to take with the pawn otherwise if black takes with the queen queen takes b7 now wins the game on the spot so g takes f6 and then long castle and, and again this is just a disaster for black so this is why Veni went for b5 you know uh, asking this bishop where he wants to go it's clear that if now white retreats the bishop to d3 now black can develop the knight to d7 because there is no pressure on b7 and this knight is actually joining the party uh, on c5 where actually it annoys uh, a lot this queen on b3 this queen on b3 hasn't got many squares in this position so this is why this is a critical moment and elizabeth Harmon replied with the best move in the position which is knight takes b5 sacrificing a piece using the fact that this skin is still in the center so c takes d5 of course uh, black is forced to accept the challenge and now bishop b5 with a check black has to cover the queen there are two options this knight or this knight of course after knight f to d7 the queen is hanging so this is why black is forced to play knight b to d7 and now white plays long castle putting a lot of pressure on d7 there are so many threats in this position bishop f6 followed by something to d7 also something to d7 uh, like rook takes d7 or bishop d7 just wins in the spot so basically black has and a unique move in this position to survive which is rook d8 and then he tries to protect d7 with all with all his heart yeah because now it's not that simple we take on f6 g takes f6 we take on d7 rook takes d7 we check on b8 queen d8 check and then we have to remember that actually black is a piece up so this is actually not working and probably black uh, is just winning in this position so how do we play in this position we have to remember that the only piece that is not working is the rook on h1 so this is a very typical theme we sacrifice an exchange on d7 the only move is rook takes d7 otherwise the queen on e7 just falls and uh, rook h to d1 now this rook that was doing nothing comes to d1 and again we have the same kind of threats as before and now black would love to have this rook on a8 so he could play rook d8 and then try uh, to resist in this position but then this rook and this bishop on f8 are not contributing to the defense of the d7 square so this is why black is completely losing in this position because now we are threatening bishop f6 followed by rook takes e7 just winning on the spot so that's why benny tried queen e6 and now I want to uh, ask you what to play in this position. Just pause the video. There's a very nice combination checkmate in three moves. And uh, I, want to, I want you to think about forcing moves. Forcing moves are captures, checks, and threats. If we take on e6, yeah, after f takes e6, I mean, we are not going to checkmate black. So basically, uh, black is even better. Well, black is not better. Black is losing. But after bishop f6, I mean, king f7, black survives uh, for some more moves, right? So, there is a better move here in this position. So, bishop takes d7. Now, this forces black to, <coughs> sorry guys, to take with the knight on d7. <coughs> I mean, I've been recording for, for 10 hours today. Some video series, so that's why <coughs> I have this voice guy. Guys, sorry. And, uh, again, forcing moves what should we play in this position should we take on e6 no right because now after f takes e6 we are actually losing in this position so checks what are the checks in this position queen takes e6 which is stupid and queen takes queen b8 sorry at first glance this this looks stupid because actually it looks like we're just blundering the queen but then we realize that after another forcing move this is actually checkmate on d8 
So uh, white is a queen and a piece down, but actually manages to checkmate on d8. So fantastic game between Elizabeth Harmon and Benny Batts. And we have to say that the real players were Paul Morphy, of course. We all know Paul Morphy and his uh, aggressive play, right? We all remember his King's uh, Gambit uh, games. And his opponent was uh, Duke Carl, and the game was played in 1858 in Paris. You, as you guys know, uh, chess was played in a lot of cafes in, in Paris. They used to bet uh, a lot uh, with these kind of games. So hope you guys enjoyed uh, this, uh, this video and uh, we'll cover another game in the next one. See you, have a nice day and take care. Yeah? Stay healthy. Bye bye.